you want to communicate atheism to the world, and we want to have a I connection with you as a human science, being. I want to communicate truth. Good. Um, do you believe in evolution? Do I believe in evolution? Yes. I believe that I don't have adequate information to even make that judgment. Well, that's very sensible. Now, uh, let me give you some adequate information. Oh, please do so. Okay. Um, the evidence for evolution is absolutely solid. It's as strong as the evidence that the planets orbit. The, you do believe the planets orbit the sun, do you? Yeah. Yes, I did science as a bachelor's. Well, you did science, so why don't you, don't you know about because, evolution? Because it was psychology, that's why. Well, psychology ought to include evolution because the human mind, the human brain, is an evolved organ. Okay. The evidence for evolution, although it happened a long time in the past, so you can't actually um, see it happening, or most of the time you can't, Nevertheless, um, I, I use the analogy of a detective coming on the scene of a crime after the crime's been committed, so you can't actually see it happen. But what you see is all the evidence, all the clues, all the fingerprints, all the, um, all the footprints and everything else. And, and that adds up massively, mo more strongly than any court of law. I, I agree with this, yeah. but the only contention that like, yeah, some okay. religious philosophers have, for example, yeah. you, know, the, you know, not all religious people don't like science. Many religious people like science. For example, a lot of the scientists were revived from the Islamic history, as, oh. as you know. The question that they would have is, evolution is, an, is a non complementary paradigm with what's happening in cosmology, for example. For example, if you look at physics and the constants, some people say there'll be a fine tuning here. There's a, some Wait, form What do you design. mean by non complementary paradigm? Because, what do you mean? For example, I think you answered that question well in your book, one, page 157, 158, when you said, we don't have an answer for physics like we do as in evolution. So the question is, the question you posed was, who designed the designer? Yeah. And I think what some Islamic philosophers, contemporary would say, that's an interesting question, but even in the philosophy of science, and I think downstairs you wanted to ignore that question about the philosophy of science, the best explanation doesn't require an explanation. And to have an added infinite regress of explanations undermines the very fact that we need an explanation. So the design argument is, is more plausible than the chance with regards to the fine-tuning of the universe, which has nothing to do with evolution. That's no, it's nothing to do with it. It's, yeah. it's, a, question, it's a question of physics. Yeah. Um, but how can it possibly be helpful to explain the origin of the universe, to postulate something complicated like a, like a god? Why don't you say it's something like a spontaneous quantum fluctuation, something like that, which is which is simple. Richard, that's a very good point. Which yeah, is simple. That's a very good point. But don't, haven't you assumed that God is complicated and made of many parts? Well, God's got to be complicated, hasn't he? Otherwise, Why? because I, he couldn't forgive your sins and listen to your prayers. Well, but you're, you're misconstruing uh, physicality, for like an entity with ability. Someone may be able to do complex things. It doesn't make his nature complex, or surely. Because I think you're superposing. What? A, what are you talking about? Okay, do if, you want to clarify? If, if yes. If, if, if God is capable of listening to prayers, forgiving sins, knowing when you've done wrong and punishing you for it, how could he possibly be anything other than complex? So are you saying that the design argument is not plausible because it creates more questions than it answers, is that what you're saying? Uh, yes. Okay, but don't you think then a bloated multiverse or multi-universe is far more complex no, than... No, I don't actually. A bloated it multiverse... It has no rational force, does a it? A bloated multiverse is actually rather simple. It's just very wasteful. It's very uneconomical. Yeah, but that's not, that's not going in line with Occam's razor, though. Do not multiply Yes, it does, right. It does, really. No, it does, rather. How does well, it do that? It's not, for a start, it's not beyond necessity if it, if it actually helps to explain something. It's not very complicated. It's just saying there are lots and lots and lots of universes. Well, you're saying there's uh, an infinite amount of universes. Well, I'm not saying that, but well, some... Well, that's the theory. Some, some physicists do. Yeah, I'm not necessarily... It's designed by an intelligent creator, omnipotent creator being. Can you just run me past why, if we're all designed, most religious people, first thing they do is chop off half of the genitalia? <laughs> I'm not, I'm yeah. gonna go. Take care, Richard. Thank you very much.